Hello, how are you doing tonight? I am just getting some things squared away to make sure that I'm actually live with you and that I can actually see questions if they pop up. So give me just a second. And I want you to know that this is going to be, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this video. I was thinking I'd make a separate page because I know that answering some of these questions, I'm going to have some links that I want you to have, some things that I want you to be able to work on. And, oh, there I am. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. So, let me get plugged in here. All right. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for watching. If you are, well, you're watching the replay, so hit like, say, say hi to me. If you have any questions and they're not answered in what I'm you know, talking about tonight, I want you to feel free to comment and I'm going to do more of these videos in the future and I might have a resource for you to check out something that you can get some value from so that you can start getting things in the right direction. So I want you to know that there are going to be other ways to get your question answered. If it's not answered tonight, I'll most certainly find a way to maybe make another video like this um, so that we have the opportunity to really talk. Now, usually people are paying money to have their questions answered, to get some guidance on something. But what I wanna do is really introduce myself and kind of give you an idea of how I work and where I'm coming from. My name's Dina Cataldo, I'm a lawyer, and I'm also a coach. I'm also the host of Soul Roadmap Podcast. And in my podcast, I talk about some of the concepts that we're actually gonna be talking about tonight. And I also bring on guests to talk about other things, other concepts to kind of give you, you know, it's called Soul Roadmap, but it's to give you some ideas and different perspectives so that you can you know take a different path try something new and maybe get some clarity on things that are already going on in your life so i'm here for you tonight if you've got anything you want to ask go ahead and ask but right now what i'm going to do is i've compiled some questions and i'm going to go through them and i will um, respond the best that i can some of them are kind of vague so <clears throat> without more details, I can't necessarily get really detailed on it, but I can give you some general guidance, give you some things to think about. And a lot of these might be exactly what you need right now because they're so varied and maybe it's just general enough for it to hit you where you need it. Okay. All right. It's weird looking at me over here. I have this other thing open. And so I just want to make sure that Everything's smooth, but it's a little distracting too. All right. So a few questions that I got, a lot of them had to do with, you know, bigger things that are going on in your life, like getting yourself motivated to do something bigger. Now, if you are watching this, chances are you are already a high achiever. You are driven. You already have something that you have been passionate about passionate about in the past, and it's driven you to this point. You're at a point in your life where, yes, you're successful, but you want something more. Yes, you should be happy with everything that you have in your life, but you want something more. And that's normal for where you are right now, because I believe as a lawyer, as somebody who's very driven, just as a personality, just as something that has, has been a part of my being, my way of being throughout my life, that we are drawn to things to make in not only enrich us, but we also want to help people. We want to not only grow ourselves, but we want to help other people in whatever way that we can. And when we are helping other people, I really believe that's when we're at our best, but we can't help other people until we work on ourselves. So when we're working on ourselves, that is really where we're going to start making the biggest strides in our life. And that's where we're going to start finding our path, our way. And there's some things in here, like questions that I have about, you know, finding your, your true passion. And I'll tell you this, there are so many ways to find it, but I'm going to tell you how I found mine and how I continue to develop mine and how that is a work in progress. So I want you to recognize just ahead of time that this is something that is a lifetime practice. You are always going to want to work on yourself. If you don't want to work on yourself, 
I highly doubt that you are watching this right now. Okay, so let me start with one question that I get a lot. And this is a question about really just trying to manage your time and energy. So this is the question. I find myself exhausted at the end of the day. How do you get motivated to do what you do after working all day? So if you haven't paid, if you, if you haven't really been introduced to my world, I am a criminal prosecutor. I work all day long. <laughs> I sometimes come in on the weekend and I do my best not to do that because I have other passions. It wasn't always like that. I used to work 50 to 70 hours a week. I would be in the office and then um, I discovered that I was killing myself, literally. I went through a breast cancer diagnosis, but even after that diagnosis and chemotherapy and all of that and recognizing that I was doing something quote unquote wrong <laughs> because <clears throat> my health was not optimal, I wasn't caring for myself the way I needed to be, I still went right back into those 70 hour work weeks. I was just as driven, I was grinding because that was how I was accustomed to being. And that's what I was doing all the time. I was accustomed to grinding. I thought that's how you worked. And I got that from watching my parents work really hard when I was younger. And that is that work ethic that I brought into my law practice. Now, the thing that really got me, and it's always a big emotion, it's a big feeling that you don't necessarily want to have that can be a driver. I was so tired of feeling exhausted in the morning and uh, I felt I felt wiped out. I never felt like I had enough rest. I always felt like I was working or I was out with a friend drinking or I was sleeping or I was watching TV until I fell asleep. I never really felt that I had time for me. I rarely worked out. When I went to the grocery store, it was very intentionally to get as many microwave meals as possible so I wouldn't have to think about food. I was tired of waking up at, I think it was six in the morning, and then putting my phone on sleep, you know, like on snooze multiple times before I woke up just before I had to be at the office. I was tired of that. I didn't like how I felt. I'd have my phone by my bed and I would maybe I'd scroll for a little while. I wouldn't get the sleep that I needed. And so I wanted to change how I felt and I just got tired of it. I got sick and tired of it. And I said, this is it. I'm done. I'm changing things. So my, you know, big motivation for making change in my life just happened to be my mornings. Okay. And how I felt. I got really in tune with how I felt and I knew I hated it and I knew there had to be a better way. I didn't know what that way was. I didn't know what it looked like, but it started with me getting my phone out of my bedroom because I knew that didn't feel good. It started with me waking myself up earlier so that I could have a morning before I went to the office because when I was getting home from the office, I was too exhausted to do anything. Now, if you have kids, this can be a big challenge, right? Like sometimes you're woken up by somebody in your bed, but if you have children, you have patterns of their behavior, right? Like you know when they are going to wake you up, wake up before that. It might be super early, wake up before that. Because that time to yourself is crucial for finding the thing that is going to motivate you and drive you to have more energy to give you that goal. If you don't have that time to yourself, you're never going to actually do anything. So if you have a side project, like a lot of people have a book they wanna write, or there's a business they want to do, or maybe they want to start their own practice. Right now they're working at a firm and maybe they want to like plan out how that's going to look. Well, you need to create that time to do it. You need that white space in your life, something that's not filled so that you can have that space in your brain for creativity because that's where creativity comes from. That's where your passions come from. It's those times when you have the opportunity to discover new things. So that is one thing that I would suggest is working on how you structure your morning. So I'm very intentional about how I structure my morning and what I do with my morning. I actually did a podcast on this. It's, um, you know, how, how to transform your mornings. I'm going to link to that below. 
And inside that podcast on that website page is the morning roadmap that I've created. So you can actually create one that looks good for you. Now, if you're not a morning person, it's just never going to happen for you. You can try doing it in the evening. I wasn't a morning person either. I made myself a morning person. So when I hear people say, oh, I'm not a morning person. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a night person. I'm a night owl, whatever it is that you say. I think it's a bunch of baloney. We tell ourselves these things. It's all thoughts. It's all interpretations. But what it comes down to is what are you intentional about doing and what do you want? And when are you going to actually get it done? Are you going to get it done after the time at the office when you're exhausted? Probably not. I tend to do both. Like I work in the more, I have quiet space in the morning. I do a little work in the morning. I go to the office and then at night I do a little bit more work like I'm doing this coaching call right now. So just recognize that you're going to have rhythms and you need to structure that white space, that time to yourself in there. Because if you don't structure it in there, like you don't schedule it, it's never going to happen. Okay. Between all of the things we've scheduled our life with, it's just never going to happen. So be sure to go in there into your calendar and really structure your time out. Okay. Um, if you are, you know, one of those people who feels like you've got things pretty much dialed in, but you need like a little extra boost, I have something called the accountability roadmap, and it will actually help you figure out where you are really spending your time. So I'm going to link to that below too. I'm actually going to create a separate web page for this particular video, just because I want you to have all these resources in one place. And then I'm going to time out the video so you know when it, when each of these questions is being asked and you can just jump right to it because i feel like when i've seen that done with other people on their websites it's really helpful another thing that i really have have gotten over time it wasn't something that i had right away but for this coaching practice that i'm doing in particular it was really helpful for me to have that big why in order to get me up in the morning and staying uh, in the evenings, having that energy to do even more. And on the weekends, of course, to do more. Because if you are not finding that big why, if you don't have that big reason to get up in the morning, you may not do it. I like the word obsessed. So for me, I am obsessed with helping people. I'm obsessed with personal growth. I'm obsessed with doing everything that I can in this life to grow bigger and to help other people grow bigger. Like it's obsessive to me. I love reading self-help books. I mean, that's my jam. I love it. I love teaching at conferences. I love talking about the brain and how it works. It's fascinating to me. Until you start to recognize what's going on in your life that really lights a fire for you, then it's going to be a little harder to motivate. But once you do, if you keep trying, you will find that thing that motivates you, but you do have to get in there and keep trying and you just have to start doing it before you're ready. All right, so let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> All right, I can't seem to get my side project off the ground. I start and stop. I have successes, but then I give up at times because it seems impossible. I don't have the time or the money. Should I keep going? Okay, well, there's a lot packed in here. So I wanna, I wanna kind of break this down. All right, so this kind of goes back to what I just said about being obsessed about something. So your side project, whatever it is, if it's writing a book, is it starting a business, whatever it is, are you obsessed with it? Like, does it just kind of like light you up? Like when you talk to other people, your face gets animated, you just get really excited, kind of like the jitters, do you get really excited about it? Because then you know you're obsessed with it and you want to keep going. So that is one sign that you would want to keep going, right? So just notice how you feel when you talk about it, or maybe it feels really heavy and like an obligation. And then start asking yourself, why does it feel like an obligation? Is it a thought that you have about this obligation? Like you think, oh, I'm not good enough unless I do this thing. Because when we start tying thoughts like that to it, then yeah, of course, it's not going to be fun for us anymore. And we're going to have self-doubts and all of that. By the way, self-doubt is normal. That's something that is going to constantly be there. You just train yourself over time to just wave it away, but that takes time and practice. So if you're not there that there yet, that's okay. All right. So 
I noticed when I was reading this question that inside of it, it had like a, I can't do it attitude. Like I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, so what I've noticed with really driven professionals is that we tend to think that we need to be perfect before we do anything. We tend to feel like we need to uh, have it all figured out and that if we don't, then there's something wrong with us. It took me some time to realize why that was the reason, like the why we felt like we did. And I recognized, you know, after like coaching with other people and, and seeing, you know, their teachings, I recognized that that's how we have been taught since little kids to behave. All right. And that's, that's true for so many behaviors that we're doing in our lives right now that are totally unconscious. Our behaviors are totally unconscious because we've just been doing them forever and we think that's the way the world is, but that's not true. Okay. So when we were kids, we were always taught you have to have an A, like everybody was aiming for an A, right? Everybody wanted an A plus or like that 4.2 GPA, 4.5 GPA. That's where I was going, right? Like I needed to have that 4.5 GPA so I could get into the college that I wanted to get into. And then once I was in college, I was racing, racing, racing. I was getting into the law school that I wanted to, right? And we were praised for following directions. We were praised for doing as we were told. We were praised for regurgitating uh, information. And if we failed, we were told we weren't good enough because we got a bad grade. And then everybody was like, why couldn't you get a better grade? Why did you do so bad in that class? I remember my worst class was math and that was in high school. I was never bad at math. I was great at math until high school. And it turns out just, I felt like a failure because I felt like I couldn't get it and I did, wasn't getting the help that I needed and I wasn't getting that feedback that I needed to understand the concepts. And so I felt like I was stupid. And the more you tell yourself that in, in that particular subject or whatever it is, the more things are going around you are going to reflect that. So it's really interesting to see how we were praised for getting these following directions and doing all these things. But in real life, we're never going to succeed unless we fail. So if you are succeeding, you know, following the rules, getting an A, succeeding, you're never really taught how to live life and real life is failure all the time. And if you don't fail, you're not trying hard enough. There was this really great podcast I was listening to today, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness. I was listening to Kobe Bryant and he was talking about how he would go in and he would watch his entire games, like rewatch them, see where the gaps were, see where there needed to be some some work on basketball. I'm not a big basketball fan, so excuse me if I don't have all the terminology. But it was really interesting to see how he went in there with the full intention of recognizing the gap, seeing where he quote unquote failed, so that way he could make the improvements later. Now, if that were something that I were able to see in math, if that were something that were done for me in math, of course I would have skyrocketed my, my work in math. But we weren't taught that in many cases, at least not in my case. So also, he mentioned um, something about Beyonce. So Beyonce, she puts on these amazing events, right? These fantastic floor shows, these amazing dancers and lights and everything's going on, the choreography. And you'd think like, wow, okay, one and done. Boom. Done. Move on to the next one. No. What she does is she immediately reviews the entire performance to see how she can improve it in the future. So when we take that mentality into everything that we do, that looking at something that we're already obsessing about, something that we love dearly, and we come back and we actually watch the entire, you know, event, play it through our mind again, then we can see where those gaps are and we can make an improvement. So it's never, I can't do it. It's always like, I can do this. How can I improve? So even if you lose a game, you go back in, you see what you're doing, and you fix it. Maybe you don't win the next game, but boy, you have a better chance, right? So our life is really about failing until we get it right. And that's hard for high achievers because we're not good at failing. It was hard in law school for me when I didn't get the grades that I expected to get because I was used to getting amazing grades. It was a very big ego uh, knock for me. So just recognize that that is something that you can 
work through, but you have to see it. So once you see it in your brain and see what's going on, because it's all the reptilian brain, right? It wants to keep us safe and happy and like warm and cozy. It doesn't want us to fail. It wants us to, to stick with the norm, but it's up to using our, us to use our prefrontal cortex to say, okay, I see what you're doing there, reptilian brain, but I'm not with that. I want to succeed in this. I have a passion. I have an obsession for this thing. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to have complete faith in myself that I'm going to get this done. All right, so that's one part of that. And then I want to uh, reframe some of your thoughts around time and money. So in this question, uh, you were worried about, um, you felt like you didn't have enough time or money to keep moving in this business. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that because this is super common. And it's something that I had to work through. I still work through sometimes because this is a practice. This is something that we're always doing. So I just want you to recognize that anytime, you know, I'm talking to you about any of these concepts, it's because I've seen them in action in myself. Okay. Okay. All right. So money, 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 money. All right. So I want you to think about some of the mentalities that you might have had surrounding money. Now, money is a touchy subject for a lot of us because uh, if we don't feel like we have enough, there's usually something in our background that really has triggered that feeling, and it's been a habit that has been fostered throughout our life. For me personally, my parents didn't have a lot of money, and I always saw them working themselves to the bone to have barely enough to cover for that month. So I grew up believing that we had a barely enough money month to month. So I could live month to month. It doesn't matter how much money I was making. I could live month to month. I'd have just enough money to get me to the next month because I was living through what I was taught as a child unconsciously. I didn't know that this was going on, but that's how my reptilian brain was comfortable. It was keeping me safe because that's what it knew. Not that that was the best way of living. That's just what it knew. So I want you to think about some things the next time you are thinking about money. If you, if you think that something is expensive, I want you to ask yourself, expensive compared to what? All right. So I've done programs from, you know, hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. What is expensive? Is, is the program that you need for your business? Is the hire that new hire that you need for your firm? Is that expensive compared to what? compared to how much you're going to cost for doing all the work that they need to be doing, because you are the most valuable person in your firm if you own it, right? And then if you have partners, then you want to make sure that they get paid the amount that they deserve. It's not that it's too expensive, but it's expensive compared to what? To you doing it? To you losing all that sleep? To you not being happy in your life? What is it expensive compared to? I want you to kind of think about that. I also want you to ask yourself, like, I want you to think about it this way. Whether we're talking about money or we're talking about time, we're talking about priorities. Are you prioritizing yourself? Are you prioritizing time? Are you pri prioritizing money? And where are you prioritizing? So if we're talking about money, like, I'll have these conversations with people and they'll say, oh, I don't have the money to do that. And I'll sit like, you know, I'll have a gardener or something like that. I don't have the money to do that. I said, oh, okay, well, how long does it take you to do your lawn? Oh, I don't know, like eight hours. It's like all day Saturday. I said, so what you're really saying is that it's more important for you to have the money than your time on Saturdays all day. Oh, well, I didn't think about it that way. So you could pay a hundred bucks a month and have your lawn done every single month, and yet you are spending you know, all day long in the yard when you could be doing other things, spending time with your kids, reading your book, you know, uh, having some free time to yourself, whatever it is. Unless you love doing your lawn, and that's like your way of unwinding, get the gardener, you know what I'm saying? So you really have to think about where you're prioritizing in your life. Are you prioritizing your lawn, your, 500, your $100 a month, for a, uh, someone to keep your lawn? Or are you prioritizing your kids? Are you prioritizing the $100 a month for your gardener? Or are you prioritizing the time that you need for your side project, your book, whatever it is? So just compare that, like where are you prioritizing? Um, okay. And then there's something that I also want you to think about is 
whenever I am thinking about a concept like money or time, I try to recognize my goals and how I know I'm going to get to my goals. So for instance, I like to know, like if I'm going to hit a milestone, I want to have somebody that I can look up to to hit that milestone. I want somebody that I can look up to and I, I see that they've already done it. So I know it's possible. Okay. Let's say a uh, million dollars, right? I see somebody making a million dollars and I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, okay, I know that is possible. I know that's a milestone I can hit. What are the things that I need to be? Who do I need to be to get there? Because it's not just doing the things, it's who do I need to be? Because if I want that, person. If I'm not feeling those feelings of the person who's already got that thing that I want, it's never going to happen because that's part of the way that we are generating that motivation, that energy to move towards our goal. Tony Robbins phrases it like this, like create that energy so that you're actually being pulled towards your goal rather than like trying to grasp at your goal. You're actually being pulled toward it. Like you're envisioning it in your mind. You know exactly what you want and you're naturally being pulled towards it. So I want you to think about it that way. I want you to think about um, how you're actually talking to yourself when you're trying to reach this goal. If you're saying things like, I don't know if it's possible. I, I'm so tired, you know, all those things. I want you to revisit some of those things that you're saying to yourself. Now I do a lot of podcasts. I talk about language in particular on several of them because it is so important. And I started to recognize over time that the language I was using was not serving me. In fact, it was hindering me from reaching my goals, from doing what I wanted to do. And when we start really recognizing what our goals are and how we're going to get there and start recognizing the language that we use every single day, does it match up with it? We're going to start to see progress when we start to really get some awareness around it. So I'm going to link to some of those podcasts about language. I'll write that down. So that way you have those at your fingertips. So podcasts. All right. And then I also want to talk one more thing about time and recognizing the reality of time. Everybody has 24 hours in a day, whether it's Beyonce, whether it's Oprah, whether it's, I don't know, you name the person that you admire, fill in the blank. They know how to prioritize time to reach their goals. If your goal is to spend more time with your kids rather than work all day long or work all night long, what can you do in order to delegate, in order to systematize so that you're not spending as much as, of your time doing it, um, but having like a system to make it go by quickly, go through it quickly? What can you do to make your life easier? your work life easier so that you can have the opportunity to spend more time with your kids. When you start asking yourself questions like that, your brain starts to work and it starts to find you answers. So I want you to start thinking about that. Find out what your priority is and then work towards that, okay? Okay, all right, so how are you doing? So I know you're watching the replay, but I do wanna hear from you. So make sure that you're hitting like, that you're, commenting and letting me know that you showed up, okay? And this is a really great opportunity for me because I get to talk to you and you get to know me a little bit. Um, I just, I get excited just talking about these things. So I, I love getting questions and I love having the opportunity to just talk to you. Um, it's so much of working online is communicating with people in a way that I don't do all the time because I'm, in a courtroom all day long. I am, you know, talking to people in the office. It's very like very gregarious. It's very collegial. And it's really interesting when I'm online that there are actually people who will go back and forth with me. And I, I love doing that. But it's also one of those things where I'm talking to a camera, right? Like I don't get to see your face. I don't get to engage with you. So when you leave a comment or you hit like, it like warms my heart since I actually get to have some engagement with you. So just keep that in mind. You're like warming my heart when you do that. So thank you very much. Okay. So another question that I have here is how do I make a decision about choosing between two business partners at work? Okay, so I don't have a lot of information on this, but I want to give you some general outlines. I mean, and if you're not dealing with this particular problem, I want you to think about maybe there's some other dilemma going on in your life. And I want you to kind of see this question and coaching through that lens, okay? 
All right, so the fact that this isn't an easy decision, it's not something that is off the top of your head easy to decide, leads me to believe a few things, okay? So first, you might be afraid of hurting someone's feelings. And if, you know, if you're a female, especially, I think that we fall into that trap sometimes. Um, I don't fall into that trap really anymore. I'm very honest with people because it makes it really easy in my life. If you're not honest with people right up front, you just cause so much drama in your life. You don't want to lead somebody on. You don't want to have that feeling of negativity in your life. Just, what is it, fish and cut, fish and cut bait? Is that what it's called? Anyway, just, just wreck fish. I don't remember. Anyway, you get my point. So just, you might be afraid of hurting someone's feelings, but really you're just prolonging the drama here. Okay, so let's get out of the drama and just, you know, make your choice. The other thing that might be going on is that you don't want to cause a disruption in the relationship, which is kind of the same thing. It's just like you're afraid of causing drama. There's another fear, right? So those are two things that I see. And another thing I see is that these two people might just be very similar to one another. I don't really have enough details here, but maybe they're just very similar to one another and you just don't know how to kind of make a choice between these two similar persons. I'm gonna tell you right now that you know exactly who you want to be your partner. I, okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a mental trick, all right? And I'm gonna walk through the fear sections in a second, but now that this is on my mind about um, how these people might be very similar to one another and how I know that you know the answer already in your heart, I'm gonna give you this simple trick. I want you to take out a quarter, okay? I want you to take out a quarter. Now, you know, one side is heads and one side is tails. I want you to assign one person to heads and one person to tails. Okay, so person A is heads, person B is tails. Okay, whatever that is, all right? Now, whoever lands side up on the quarter, that is the person you're gonna be, is gonna be your business partner, okay? You flip the quarter, and then when it lands, take a look at it, and notice the feeling that you have when you see that side of the coin facing you. Does your gut drop? Like, oh, I wish it weren't that guy. Or does your heart race like, yes, that's the guy or girl. That is the only use for a coin toss decision is to recognize the emotion that you get from flipping that coin. That is going to tell you exactly who you should choose. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. But now if it's that fear that you're going to hurt somebody's feelings, I want to get to that part. So uh, I want you to think about the thought cycle. So if you're familiar with my podcast, I've talked about the thought cycle a bit. So the thought cycle is really just a visual representation of how the world works and how our brains work. So we're faced at the top of the circle with evidence, like a fact, an objective fact. So uh, the sky is blue, all right? Something that no one can argue with. You know, this isn't your opinion about anything. It's not like I, I dislike this politician. None of that. This politician is bad. None of that. That is, that is an interpretation. We're just going to say something like the sky is blue. It's a fact, okay? And then... I'm going to do this so that the video shows it right. So then you're going to see the thought, the interpretation that you make. That's the thought, the interpretation that you have of that evidence. And as you move down, you're going to then create a feeling because all of the thoughts that we have create a feeling. So whether it's joy, anger, fear, like we're dealing with here, like that fear of causing drama, the fear of hurting someone's feelings, that is something that is happening right now in our life. And then when we act out of that emotion, right, because we always act out of an emotion that we have, we then create a result in our life, all right? And that result is going to substantiate in our brain what our thought was. It's always, it's always going to work that way. So circumstance, oh, I'm going to work this way. Circumstance, thought, feeling, action, result, and that result is always going to support our thought about the circumstance, okay? So 
let me give you an example here. So you're talking about, well, this is one of the things that I thought might be going on here is that you might be afraid of hurting someone's feelings or you're afraid of causing drama. I want you to work your, your way back to that and think about why you're feeling that way. Is it because this person has behaved poorly to you in the past? That might tell you something about why you feel the way that you do and why that is somebody you need to just cut out of, out of this decision making right now. Um, but the other thing I want you to recognize is anytime you act out of fear, you're going to make a poor decision. I want you to act out of a place of confidence. So what thoughts are going to bring you confidence? Is it that you have the confidence that you are going to build a business that is successful and that is drama free and you know exactly how you're going to make that happen? And then you're acting out of that feeling of strength and confidence rather than fear. Because whenever we're acting out of fear, we're acting out of lack, right? We're, we're acting out of that fear that, you know, somebody's going to have their feelings hurt, that fear that, you know, oh, woe is me, this is going to end badly, you know, whatever it is, we are going to not make a great decision when we're acting out of fear. So just recognize that's what's going on, if that's what's going on in this particular instance, and act out of a confidence. And that confidence can be built by working on your thought process, okay? Because I really want you to recognize like your thoughts are what's causing your feelings. So if you're feeling fear right now, I want you to go back and I want you to think through what feelings do you want to generate for the result. If you want a result of a strong business, you want to feel like you have a confident foundation. You want to feel like you have the right people in the right place and the, the environment that you're creating in your life is collegial and gregarious, is something that is fun to go to every single day. I want you to work out of that feeling. And that those are the thoughts that you're going to create in order to get that feeling. And then when you start making your decisions from that feeling, you're going to make a good decision. Okay? All right. But I like the coin toss one. That's always my favorite go-to. I, I don't really, I haven't had to use that in a really long time, but I remember having to use it and it was something that was like, oh, well, this is a, just a really neat way to kind of recognize my feelings about a situation that I didn't have awareness around before. It's kind of cool. Okay. All right. What time is it? Okay. Wow. We're going, we're going 40 minutes in right on. Okay, so let's do a few more questions here. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've got a few more questions, but what I'm going to do, this is all going to be recorded. It's all going to be uploaded onto a page for you with all the resources. So I'm excited about this. This is going to be really cool. All right. How do you stay in control of work instead of letting the work control you? Oh, this is a good one because this is one that I get asked a lot, like this kind of question. One is boundaries. You got to have boundaries all over the place. Um, if you are a lawyer, I've done the, I created the 10 day lawyer life detox and it's all about creating boundaries in bits and spurts every single day to get you going, but it dives in even deeper to help you with areas. So for instance, I love to, um, create boundaries wherever I can in my particular job. So my, my message on my voicemail says I'm in court Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will check my messages on Tuesday and Thursday. I do want to make sure that I get back to you uh, and your call is important to me. So if you want to email me, here's my email address because I respond better to email. So that's one way I do it to create a boundary and let people know, hey, you may not get your call you know, returned right away because I have a high call volume, I have a high caseload, and I'm not in the office all that much. So that's one way to create a boundary. All right. Another way to create a boundary is to regulate where your attention is being redirected. So if you want to focus on a project and yet you've got your email things going on, you've got notifications on your phone, you've got people coming into your office all the time, you got to find a way to regulate that. You got your phone ringing. Don't pick up your phone when you're in the office. I'm just saying, don't pick it up. If it's really important, someone will come into your office and talk to you. If you recognize the name on the phone and you need to talk to them right away, go ahead and pick that phone up. But usually it has nothing to do with the project that you're working on. And then you get drawn into this entirely new project. It's such a waste of time. And then we're constantly redirecting our attention. So you've got to have boundaries around what your work's doing. Um, you are in control. I want you to know that you're the one who's in control. You can prioritize. You can recognize what's truly important. And you have the ability to really disconnect from certain areas so that you can get some focused work done. 
I get the multitasking mentality, especially among lawyers. You're not multitasking, you're context switching. So every time you're using one part of your brain to focus on, or you're using your brain to focus on one topic, you then have to refocus your brain onto this new topic. And then when you go back to the other one, you have to refocus your brain again. It is a big drain on energy. If you feel like energy is one of the things you need to work on, like you want to boost your energy, this is one way to do it. Find a way to stop the context switching. It's going to happen sometimes, like in court, it's unavoidable. But if you can find ways to just say, hey, like I, I do this with defense attorneys, I can't talk to you. I wave my hand at them sometimes. I'm on the record. I'm listening to the judge. Like sometimes they can't even, they don't even understand because they're not in your position. They don't see what you're seeing. They don't hear what you're hearing. And they can't recognize that your attention is being drawn in three different areas. So you just have to like let them know, hey, Pay attention. I, I have needs. <laughs> Your needs are important. So just recognize that you can create boundaries. You can prioritize here. And if you are more interested in learning about how you can do that and how you can clean up some other areas of your life to create more energy and time in your life, the 10 day lawyer life detox, if you're a lawyer is, I think it's amazing. And I invited a couple guests to help with some other areas too that I thought were really helpful. Okay, how do you create discipline and confidence to create things like your podcast? I'm in a rut and need some inspiration. First of all, I mean, you just you just got to invest in a coach. Like I invested in a coach and it changed my life. I've invested in multiple coaches and they've changed my life every single time. It's ridiculous. Like they help you with direction, recognizing your thought patterns, recognizing where you're holding yourself back, where you're playing small in your life. I would not have been able to recognize any of that in the short amount of time that I was able to do that unless I had a coach. Like that's just, that's just it. I mean, that was my secret coaches. Um, and then you got to practice. You got to keep practicing and you got to keep practicing and you got to keep practicing and you got to start before you're ready. Cause like the podcast, I wasn't ready for that four years ago, four years ago, I was writing blogs. I was, st I started a little online tea business. I was trying to figure that out. I didn't really even know what an online business was. I learned about this whole like world of things like online coaching. What the heck was that marketing? What is that? I was fascinated by all of it. And that is what compelled me to keep going. Like I was obsessed with learning about all of these things. And I found like this passion that I had no idea existed. So if you're, you know, looking for a big why, I think one of these questions was like looking for a big why. You just have to play. You have to experiment. You just have to jump in before you're ready. Did I know that I was going to be able to do a podcast four years ago? No. Did I know that over the years that was a way that I really enjoyed taking in information was a podcast? Yes. And then when the time came, I knew that I wanted to start a podcast because that's something I loved. And I wanted to create something that would appeal to me like five years ago. Okay. So you just have to, you just have to keep practicing and finding that thing. And then once you find it, you're going to have your big why. You're going to find that obsession that you have. How do I find my next path? I quit my well-paying job because I wanted to run my own business, but nothing gets my passion out. Just start, just start, just keep going. I actually just did a podcast. I think it was episode 49. I'll put, I'll link to that in the page too. It was amazing. You just start, you find like sometimes things work out and sometimes things don't. And that's that whole mentality we were talking about earlier, right? Is we're, we're afraid of failing. We think that it means something about us if we fail. It doesn't. It just means that we can take a look at what's going on and we can start making changes. We can start altering things until we find that sweet spot for ourselves. Okay. Another question, how do I draw the line with clients who want the results but don't provide evidentiary support materials in a timely manner? Um, I work late and I'm stressed out because I want to do my best in representing them. I feel like my reputation's on the line. This goes, there's a few things that I want to talk about. First of all, full disclosure. So because I'm a criminal prosecutor, I don't deal with clients in the same way that you do, but I do have some experience in creating boundaries and reminders and all of that good stuff. So what I do when I am speaking to somebody who, uh, defense attorneys especially, this is like, it's, it, they have a hard time talking to their clients, right? Like you, because they're, they're disorganized. They don't have, they don't have this, 
what I'm about to tell you in place. And so when I'm trying to get information from a defense attorney, I have to remind them. I have to say, okay, it's a week ahead of time. I need this information before the next court date. So that way I can review it before. If you give it to me the night before, I'm not going to review it because they'll send it to you at 4 p.m. the day before court. And you're like, I'm not going to review it. I've got other things I'm doing right now. So just recognize what your boundaries are. If you feel like they are not getting you the materials that you need, it's important to structure a timeline for them. You might already be doing this, but hear me out. So structure a timeline for them. And I want you to get really clear with them about why this is important to them. Why do they want the result that they want? How important is it to them? Because if you can get that intensity of desire of the results up here rather than down here, then you can get them to follow your directions. So you can find out, okay, what is the result that you want? Find out what it is and say, okay, if you want this result, I'm gonna need some materials from you and I need some time to go through them. So I need them by next week. In fact, if you could get them to me earlier, that will be even more helpful. So like keep them on a really short leash. Don't tell them like, okay, we continued the case out six weeks. Um, yeah, get me the materials. Don't keep it loosey goosey like that. Say, look, I'm gonna need a lot of time on this. I need the materials in one week. You may you know, be fine with three weeks out, whatever it is. Keep them on a really short leash, one week. If you don't hear from them in one week, say, uh, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, I didn't get your materials. I need them, like yesterday. And then the next week, they should have them. If they don't have them, still say, you know, Mr. So-and-so, I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to get everything together for you uh, if I don't receive these materials, um, you know, by the end of the day. You know, something like that. Like you got to keep them on a really tight leash, especially ones who seem to be getting a little wily because you've got to have boundaries. It's not fair to you to be working all night. You're not doing your best work. Um, when I do the master class, I'll do another master class in um, October, I think, August or, Octo August or October, one of those. I'm going to uh, talk about this and the thought cycle and how this works with, you know, why we're not creating the boundaries that we're creating. And are not creating and and why it's so important that we need to take care of ourselves to get the results that we want so just recognize you need to take care of you on this all right and then make sure you've got ticklers so if you're using Google Calendar or Outlook make sure that you type in ticklers so that you've got something popping up on your computer screen saying hey email mr. and mrs. so-and-so to get those documents something like that okay um, okay all right and how do you know when you have found the thing that you're meant to do, you're going to have that joy, you're going to have that passion, that fire, you're going to feel it, you're going to have that animation in your face. It's going to be awesome. Like this. Like I love doing this. All right. What resources did you need to start your business? Okay. This is a really big one, okay? This is a really, really big one. And I, I don't know, really know where to start with this one except to say start Googling things. <laughs> so, so if you're interested in starting, I don't know, any kind of business, right? Like a tea business like I did or a coaching business like I'm doing, start finding people who are already doing what you're doing and learn from them. Just start to understand like what it is they do and how they do it and start to make friends with them. Like start to like follow what they're doing, get engaged with them on social media, figure out like, what they're doing and how they're doing it so you can get ideas. I'm not saying going out, go out there and copy them. I'm saying go out there and just get some inspiration and figure things out and learn. Like you have to be a voracious learner. You've got to be waking up early and going home, listening on the, to the podcast on the way to work. You're just learning because it takes a long time. Well, okay. I don't want to use that phrase. It takes time to start creating the foundation, the capacity to have what you want. So get started now. Like just, just go out there, find the person who has what you want and learn from them and do it and shorten the time between you learning here and you learning way over here to this. You're going to condense time because you're going to learn from somebody who's already gone through all of this and they're going to teach you all of that in a much shorter amount of time. And that's why coaching is so helpful is because they've already gone through this. They're able to condense your learning process so much quicker. All right, so we're at the end. This is where I wanted to talk to you, okay? So we've been talking about coaching throughout this. If you want to learn how to coach with me, I'm going to link. It's dinacataldo.com forward slash work with me. 
You can learn about my lawyer's programs, but you can also learn about personal coaching with me and set up a free 30 minute discovery call if that is the direction that you want to go. I have to tell you, like there is nothing like having a personal coach to help you jump from point A to point Z. Like they just help you make leaps and bounds in your thought processes. And when I've talked to my coaching clients, they've said like, wow, I had no idea that I was able to set up my business the way that I set it up. Like they didn't really even know the steps of how to do it, how to start an email list, how to, you know, understand all of that. And that basic, that basic stuff is something I can help you with. Um, I can also help you with prioritizing, creating boundaries, making sure that you're really recognizing where your time and your money is being spent if you want a certain result. And we really talk about how you can get the result in your life using the thoughts, the interpretations that you have, and the feelings that you have in your life. Because really, our results are driven by how we think. The problem is right now is that our thoughts are so hardwired right now, like they've been on autopilot for so long that we need to build some awareness around them. And the quickest way to build awareness around them is to have a personal coach, someone who can actually talk to you and hear the words that are coming out of your mouth, because then you get to actually hear somebody else's perspective of you. And you recognize where you're playing small, like I did, or you recognize where you're not getting things done. You recognize why you're holding yourself back. You don't feel like you're holding yourself back. Your, your brain is actually coming up with all these really good reasons for why you're not doing what you want to do in life, right? Oh, I don't have time. I don't have money. Oh, you know, maybe next week. Oh, you know what? I just don't feel like it right now. Oh, this great show on Netflix is on. Oh, this is such a great show. I'm just going to binge it. No. There's a lot going on in our brains and we can actually see it better when we have somebody who's talking to us one-on-one -on -one to dig it out of us. So go to dinacataldo.com forward slash work with Dina and I will talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I'll do a 30 minute free discovery call. You can see what coaching can do for you. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Feel free to like share this video with anybody. In the comments, I'm going to actually link to that page that's going to have the video um, replay, and it's also going to have uh, links to all the times when, I, when I'm doing the questions so you know exactly which question to link to. All right. I hope you have a fabulous night. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.